Okay, so maybe we should start little by little um, talking about finance and funding. Um, I remember that uh, yesterday, uh, I think, uh, Chanti, you raised the point regarding the funding and finance of those different actions. So I think this is a key, uh, of course, this is a key uh, element if we want to implement climate change adaptation plan or if we want to implement any uh, management activities, let's say. So uh, my, my name is Romain Renoux. I'm the executive director of the MedFund and I will be uh, moderating this session this morning. And I'm pleased also to welcome on this uh, very high level panel, uh, Mr. Lorenzo Meroto from the uh, Portofino MPA. He's in charge of uh, science besides so many other things. We were talking about that. When you manage an MPA, you do quite everything. We have Carol Martinez, also part of the uh, MedPan team, who will be uh, sharing with us the recommendation of this, uh, of this um, session. Agnol Esteban will be also joining us in a few minutes. He's a marine biologist, environmental economist, and the uh, director of the Mariles Foundation. But he's having now an interview with the radio. So he's a very famous guy. So we will uh, maybe uh, start with Lorenzo and he will join afterwards. And then we'll have uh, Timote Cook from Blue Seeds online. Hi, Timote. We don't uh, see you, but I hope that you are. Uh, Hello. Uh, online, uh, I see you and I can morning. hear you. So maybe to start with, I think that we have a video. I remember that. Uh, well, they, they, this is sorry. This is the title of the of the of, of the session. So, financing investing in healthy marine ecosystems for a sustainable and resilient future. Well, this is a very poetic way of saying that we we need fund or right to implement our management uh, activities. So maybe we should start with the video. I guess yes. Thanks. <laughs> Sound? There is no sound? This is Our marine environment provides us with many goods and services. Natural capital accounting is a methodology that helps us visualize all this and provides us with information to take action to protect and improve our environment. The mix of marine habitats and species is our natural capital. The healthier it is, the more benefits and services we get. In 2020, we started a natural capital accounting study of the marine reserve of Levant Cala Rajada in eastern Mallorca, Spain, covering only 11,286 hectares. This marine protected area generates goods and services worth 4.8 million every year, 10 euro of benefits for every euro invested. Investing in marine protected areas pays off. Nice video huh? to start this uh, to start this session. So, just a couple of slides I want to share with you because uh, before I pass the floor to Lorenzo, um, just saying that, and we talk about that this morning, and I think yesterday also, is that marine protected areas are a triple win. Uh, they preserve biodiversity and marine ecosystems, so we saw that, but that also contributes to the climate change mitigation, but also the adaptation of the coastline. We also talk about that this morning, but they are also provide what we are calling blue economy activity. They do support the implementation of blue economy activities. So how we could capture that? So this is uh, part of the talk of this, uh, of this morning. Uh, the Med Fund, just in a nutshell, uh, the Med Fund is an environmental fund dedicated to support day-to-day -day management activities of marine protected areas across the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, at the Med Fund, we believed that a skilled management team and sustainable management team plus sustainable funding uh, deliver efficient and sustainable MPAs. So, looks like basic, like 
like that, but it's actually true. There is a lot of MPA across the Mediterranean Sea. They don't have sustainable management team because there is a big turnover, or they don't have sustainable funding. So how we can promote, let's say, MPAs to decision makers, political leaders, and this is part of the talk of this morning, how can we use the natural capital to also convince leaders that investing in MPAs pays off? So I give the floor to start to uh, Aniol uh, Esteban. So you'll have like almost 10 minutes each and we keep the question for the, at the last of the presentation. Thank, thank you very much, Romain. Um, I'm gonna go to the, to the edge of the stage and I'm gonna set um, my watch so that I don't take too much time. So uh, thank you very much, uh, everyone. And it's great to have the opportunity to tell you about this pilot action that Marillas Foundation led. And because I don't know if I'm gonna have a chance to, to say it later, I would like to say now that um, apart from all the effort that um, MedPan coordination team had put in organizing this, this has been one engine behind one driving force making this possible, which is this man sitting down now, which is Tony Font. And I think he deserves a big clap. He, he is a great host, and um, I'm sure that if you want to come back to Mallorca, partly will be thanks to him. And it's a great contact to have. He's a multiple contacts all over the world. So thanks very much, Tony, because I have quite abandoned him to the wolves, and he's gone <laughs> brilliantly. Um, okay, now that I have uh, shaken off my guilt, <laughs> I will tell you about this, um, this project. So the, the main reason behind this uh, action is that if we are not able to explain and describe the benefit that marine protected areas have, the benefits that marine protected areas bring to our society and our economy, then we will be very, very, very um, unable to get more funding and secure the level of funding needed to make them work as they should. So, quick photo of the Balearics region is um, one of the best preserved regions in the Met, more than 400 fish species, half of the seagrass meadows, Posidonia, that Spain has are in Balearic waters, resident population of, of um, large megafauna. Um, however, it's a region under pressure. The level of pressure on these islands is tremendous. And massive um, 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 amounts of, uh, of visitors, uh, growing recreational fishing, growing nautical pressure, uh, still problems with wastewater treatment, different um, re um, challenges that need to be solved. The professional fishing fleet has been massively on decline over the past years, but there are some good bases for change. One is that um, we, we hear, um, we sense a change from society, from the private sector and from the public sector, which is um, favorable for marine conservation. And we have a network of marine protected areas covering about 20% of the sea under some form of legal protection. However, only 0.16 or 0.2% no take zone. So if we want to deliver the 10% goal by 2030, we need to increase no take zone area times 50 in less than eight years. MPAs, being very simplistic, are created for two reasons, as you know. Either fisheries performance, such as the fisheries marine reserves, or biodiversity conservation. And you might have different forms there, like natural parks, national parks, Natura 2000 sites. Irrespectively of what they are created for, these are mutually reinforcing um, objectives. So they help to deliver each other. But they deliver much more than the uh, objectives for what they've been created. They deliver economic activity, they deliver educational opportunities, they deliver leisure, well-being, uh, opportunities for sports, for health. However, for this to work, we need to invest. We need to invest in management, coordination, enforcement, monitoring, participation, and so on. And applying natural capital accounting to a 
marine protected area, thinking of a marine protected area in terms of a capital, of a, of a machine that generates benefits to us, hmm, can be a way of um, making visible that relationship between the economy and the marine environment. So, if we think about our marine environment or a marine protected area as our capital, hmm, as the money that we have in the bank, for example, um, this capital generates goods and services, fish, leisure, climate regulation, and so on. If we have this capital in good health, we deliver lots of benefits. And if we have it in bad health, we deliver fewer benefits. Pretty simple to understand, and most of you already know this. However, the challenge is that most of these benefits are invisible. And unless we measure them, we can't visualize them and we can't tell the story. So the natural capital accounting methodology helps us to achieve this. And before I, I go into, into detail, I would like to say that the work that I'm going to present now, which is the pilot action that we did in Cala Raja de Llevan, was done in collaboration with two consultancies. One is um, ECOAXA. David is there. Please, David, uh, stand up so that people can see you. So David did all the, his, his company did all the technical, economical, and economic valuation analysis. And if you have any specific questions, please go and find him. And then we worked in partnership with CBBA, which is a local consultancy, which did all the data gathering. Hmm? This is an example of um, monetization and economic valuation of one asset, which are the Posidonia Meadows in the Balearics. And this shows that the stock value of all the Posidonia for the next, um, looking at 60 years ahead, is in the region of 600 million. Hmm? Uh, so you have a few examples of economic value per hectare in terms of water quality improvement, coastal protection, and ecological productivity. It's an underestimate because it doesn't include many other services that we get from Posidonia, like the pleasure of seeing it, for example. Hmm? or the value of existing per se, because I don't need any economic uh, argument, and probably neither do you, to justify the conservation of something, but a significant share of society does. So um, that's why we are doing this. How does natural capital accounting works? Very simple, four steps. Asset register, look at the region, and marine protected area in our case, and identify all the habitats and species we have and what's their state of conservation. Second, identify what are the benefits and goods that are generated by that mix of habitats. Thirdly, try to um, put an economic valuation, try to describe those services and goods in economic terms. And lastly, try to estimate how much does it cost to manage that particular place. Hmm? These are simple questions with very difficult answers, and they require a methodology to be done. And, and, and in the same way that it was difficult to answer the question of how much does it cost to have a climate vulnerability assessment, we need to be better at, at, at having those price tags um, for what we need. So there were very few precedents of applying a natural capital accounting to a marine protected area. And a part of this project has helped us to develop guidelines to replicate it to other MPAs. We produced a methodological guide. Uh, we did this um, pilot study in Cala Raja de Llevan, which is in the eastern side of Mallorca. It cost about 60,000 euros, and it took us about 10 months. This is the location of the, of the site on the eastern part of, of Mallorca. It's an area of 11,000 hectares. It was established in 2007 at the request of, of fishermen. Uh, it's a fisheries uh, marine reserve, so a, a small scale artisanal fishermen are allowed to fish. Spur fishing is not allowed. There are regulations. There was a strong opposition to the declaration of the fisheries reserve. There were adverts on the newspaper in 2007 saying this is going to be the, the death of this region if we declare a marine protected area. And people who were opposing that marine protected area now are benefiting from it through their tourism-related activities. 
It's a mix of habitats, about 10, 15, 20 small scale fishermen fish there, and there is some economic activity linked to the area, like diving centers, boat trips, and other leisure activities. So this, the, the simplified version of the analysis is that the gross value of the services and the goods attributed to this area is in the region of 5 million a year. And the cost of managing this area is about half a million a year. So for every euro we invest, we get 10 euro of return. And we make it clear that the potential could be even higher because this is not the best managed MPA in the world. There are lots of shortcomings and more funding is needed. But nonetheless, this is a very, very positive return. And similar stories could be told across the Met if we make similar analysis. In more detail, um, there, here there are some numbers for the, um, the, the different goods and services measured. So we measure from the carbon capture to the recreational activity that can be linked to the reserve. And put it very simply, two thirds of the value is captured by the tourism and recreational sector. A very small amount of the value is captured by the fishermen, but it is enough for them to be happy in a way and content with the reserve. But I think that value could be increased. And the rest of the values are different economic eco ecosystem services that benefit the population. This is um, the front page of the methodological guide, which um, I think we translated into English, Tony, is that right? Um, the methodological guide, yes. So it's, it's available, it's available on the, on the site. And, um, and this is, uh, yes. So we released these results last month of July with great media impact. Mm -hmm. We got it nearly a full page in El País, which is a leading newspaper. We got a very good story in El Mundo, which is also a, a, a big um, newspaper on different political sites. So covering broad spectrum of society. And then um, when we published it, there was um, interest from The Guardian, so it's published from The Guardian. And once it was published on The Guardian, Leonardo DiCaprio tweeted about it. So um, that meant that this story has been told in the Balearics three times. First was when we published it. Second was when it was in The Guardian, because the newspaper says the international press talks about our marine protected areas. And then when Leonardo DiCaprio tweeted about it, Leonardo DiCaprio talks about our marine protected areas. So a big, big media impact for this piece of work. And if you want to, to learn more, um, well, visit the web page of the, of the project, contact myself or Tony Font. And if you want to follow the work we do, which has lots of economics in it, follow us on social media. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Agnol. That was very clear. And I'm sure that Leonardo DiCaprio goes also to Portofino from sometimes. So there is a challenge for you now, guys. You have to get a tweet from Leonardo DiCaprio, right? Next time from the, for the Portofino MPA. So the floor is to Lorenzo Meroto, so in charge of the science in, uh, in the MPA. Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, thanks. Uh to give me the opportunity to speak about uh, this. And um, yeah, we talk, uh, I, I do a, a little difference with the, uh, my, the previous presentation because uh, we, we want to um, underline how the natural capital can be an instrument to um, involve the policy maker. So uh, first of all, uh, what is the natural capital analysis? I am uh, in a MPA staff, so I'm not a researcher, not a proper researcher. And anyway, this kind of study for me is very, very hard to do. So the, and for most of the people understand what is the capital natural. Natural capital is very difficult. And uh, so we have uh, an ecosystem that provides us uh, the natural capital. Uh, so, for example, the, our environment, seagrass, coral legions, etc. Some ecosystem function, for example, also the fish. Then ecosystem services that can be different. The services for the fishers, 
for, uh, for example, the Posidonia Medio give us a lot of services, uh, protect the coast for erosion, give fish, um, carbon sequestration, and go on. And then all the socio-economic system with benefit and monetary value. The um, so socio-economic system can do some impact on the ecosystem. So the socio-economic system um, can erode itself, eroding the ecosystem. I don't know if it's clear, but the, the situation is more or less uh, this. Uh, so now I, I didn't do a presentation on um, uh, Portofino MPA because yesterday Valentina do this, uh, did this, and uh, uh, more or less my presentation is the sequel of the one from uh, Valentina. So um, in collaboration with the uh, University of Genoa, uh, because uh, as I said before, I cannot do this kind of analysis. We provide data, for example, the one that yesterday Valentina uh, talked about. They elaborate with us, and uh, at the end uh, we have uh, results. For example, these are the results of uh, the, our natural uh, capital in the MPA, in the different habitats, and uh, it's estimated about uh, um, 18 million of, of euro, mainly for uh, on Posidonia, Coraligenus, and uh, uh, Photophorus um, uh, algae. Then, so this is what the natural capital, what we have in the, our MPA. Then there is, there are the economic, uh, um, economic activity. In this case, yesterday, we talked about the fisheries. So we have done a um, lot of monitoring. We give the data from uh, monitoring uh, to University of Genoa and do this uh, elaboration in the framework of MPA networks. What uh, we can see that uh, the um, artisanal fisheries harvest, so uh, subtract from um, uh, our MPA, 380,000 uh, euro of natural capital. So, and in these graphs, it's possible to see that uh, um, the, the, um, the grade of natural capital uh, eroded can be sustainable or not. For example, we see that uh, you see some sector that are in red, in the sector, there is a lot of uh, uh, impacts, a lot of harvest from fisheries. So maybe we have to manage this. In other sector, the, the, the situation is better. What I want to that underline uh, um, after, that uh, in some area, let's say here, near uh, Portofino Cape, the situation ap appears good. But uh, this is for a lack of data that uh, I, I show after. Um, so the key fact, the results can help us to reduce impacts, to make the, some, um, um, some uh, consideration about uh, the impacts of the activity on uh, uh, the specific hab habitat. And uh, um, so it's necessary to use the natural capital value as communication tool with uh, uh, decision makers and also to the, to the stakeholder. Because often the, the policy maker and the stakeholder doesn't understand the importance of an MPA from a monetary and economic point of view. And um, uh, as I said before, the MPA management can decide and have to decide to use this data to take some specific measure to uh, make that uh, this, um, this uh, uh, not sustainable use of uh, resources can impact uh, sometime definitely in uh, the, the, the MPA. And uh, it's important because uh, uh, now I have speaked about uh, the uh, fishermen, but this kind of, uh, of analysis can, do, can be done also on, for example, 
diving activity, boating activity. So it can be expand, extended to many other activities. So um, it's necessary to work with uh, a um, skilled organization, research organization. The MPA staff often don't, uh, doesn't have knowledge and time to do this uh, kind of analysis. And uh, the MPA staff who carry the monitoring and participate to, with the researcher to the analysis have to know their area very well in order to understand the, the, all uh, the factor that can um, um, alter the, the results. And uh, it's very important, the communication, because it is a very hard uh, topic, this one, and often when you talk with a researcher about uh, this, um, this, uh, this topic, uh, you didn't understand anything because they are too technical. And uh, at the end uh, of one hour of talk, you know exactly the, the, the same that before the talk. So um, it's uh, necessary to simplify all the message of, uh, of this study. Difficulties, I repeat, the team uh, of researchers have to be specialized because uh, sometimes someone improvises in this kind of activities. But uh, in uh, Italy, in Europe, there are uh, teams that uh, in their uh, uh, work do only this kind of research. So they are very skilled. And uh, the, um, the, this kind of uh, study have to be continuously updated because uh, the lack of data can uh, alter in some way the results. For example, um, the, the green area be in, uh, that I show um, before is a very impacted area. We know that, uh, that uh, is very impacted, but we have problem to gather data from it. So in the future, we want, for example, try again with involved a couple of fishermen that are not very collaborative in that area to take more data and try to, um, to understand what is the situation in, the, in that area. And uh, I work uh, on mainly on MP Engage and then an M on MP Networks. And uh, I, done, I did a lot of effort on vulnerability assessment. So I think that uh, the natural capital accounting and the vulnerability assessment have uh, to work together because uh, with the natural capital, you know your monetary value of your MPA and uh, with the vulnerability assessment, you can somehow forecast what uh, can happen, not only for the um, impact of the human activity, but for the climate change. So I think that these uh, two tools are fitting uh, uh, very well uh, each other. So, and, uh, and they are a good tool to speak with uh, policy maker and, uh, um, and uh, in general with, uh, with stakeholder. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, do not for, forget the Leonardo DiCaprio challenge. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next year, and, uh, we need a tweet. We have a Chiara Ferragni. Okay. But it's not the same. It's not the same. So the same. So she will need to, two tweets. For <laughs> uh, so thank you very much also for linking the two projects. I think that was very interesting. MPA Networks and MPA Engage having these two complementary tools to share with decision makers. I think this is very interesting point that you have uh, highlighted. Thanks again. So now we have one. Uh, we have um, someone uh, online, I guess, that will make a presentation uh, from from Bordeaux, maybe. So Timothy Cook from Blue Seeds. The floor is yours. Okay, hello. Um, can you hear me? Not really. Okay, I'll try again. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay. Does that sound good? Okay, so apparently um, you, you guys are supposed to be showing the slides, and I will tell you next slide or something like that. Okay. 
Okay, yes, thank you very much. So, minutes. yes, thanks. So I'm I'm speaking from Bordeaux here, and um, so it's very hot, as I'm sure it is also where you are. Um, so, yes, the the I was asked to to provide some training insights, and at Blue Seas we do quite a lot of training for marine protected areas, and it's it's tempting to try when you're addressing effectiveness to give a sort of general training and you think, okay, this time uh, we've nailed it and um, they're going to be good, they're going to be effective. Actually, um, the, the truth is that you need to think about using building blocks. And one of the building blocks that needs to be used um, very often is uh, the building block to train on business planning. So I'm going to get there. So I'm not going to go into detail. Homa has um, touched on this there. The you know sufficient financial resources are a precondition to ensuring that MPAs are well managed and play their role. Um, the founder of Blue Seeds uh, led a study in 2015 in collaboration with MedPan and other collaborators uh, on the financing gap of Mediterranean MPAs, and the study showed that only eight percent of the financing needs for optimal management within the 10% uh, coverage framework, IESHE 2020 targets, were covered by available resources. So this meant a financing gap to reach that 10% coverage of 700 million euros per year. And this was in 2015, so uh, accounting for inflation and a new framework of 30%, a simple linear extrapolation would um, would put that financing gap around 2.5 billion euros per year at the at the regional scale, uh, and so it's clear there is a, a necessity to provide uh, MPAs with an educational path to enable them to gradually build their financing skills. Next si slide, please. Okay, so so one of the, the first skills required by MP managers to develop a financial strategy is business planning. And so just quickly, although this may seem obvious to some of you, it was not to me at first because I'm a biologist by training. What is a business plan? It's, it's a plan of all of the costs and revenues of your MPA that are related to its activities over a period of, let's say, five to 10 years. And the first thing you need to do before you start building a business plan is to make a list of your activities and their costs. And in order to do this, you need a management plan with a detailed action plan. Um, and so what is the purpose of all this? Well, without a business plan, you have no idea of how much money you need to fund your conservation activities with. And therefore, you have no idea what your financing gap is, and you cannot, therefore, develop a financial strategy. So it's pretty basic. But... Uh, Trust me, from our experience, not a lot of uh, managers or MPAs have the skills, time, or interest to develop these, um, these plans. And currently, only around 28% of MPAs in the Med have a business plan. Uh, so part of, part of the networks, MPA Networks Interreg project, with the support of the MAVA Foundation, the Fonds Français pour l'Environnement Mondial, and the Office Français de la Biodiversité, MedPan launched a training program on business planning last year designed and de delivered by us, Blue Seeds, with the support of Reuni National Park. And um, most of the content of the training and its, its general structure was inspired by this guide that we've published last year, which is called Financing Mechanisms for Mediterranean Protected Areas. Next slide, please. So how did, how did we organize this training? As we all know, unfortunately, Mr. COVID got in the middle of, uh, of a lot of things last year. Um, and so, although this was initially scheduled as a face-to-face -face training, in the real world in Pioni, we had to move it uh, online. And so that was a challenge for us because it's not, uh, there, there's no real sort of, um, let's say, uh, solution fitting all to do this. So we, we tried this hybrid approach, which actually worked pretty, pretty well, which was a combination between autonomous e-learning and online face-to-face -face learning. Uh, so first, we, we had the sort of kickoff meeting, and the participants were made to watch online videos that we had prepared. And then they were made to work autonomously on their, on their business plan using uh, what's called the MedPlan tool, which is a business planning matrix uh, that was made by Blue Seeds for MedPan. So they used this to work on the financial data. And then 
One week later, we met online face-to-face -face with the participants to discuss the results um, and, and then had them watch some more videos and met with them again to develop the financial strategy. Next, sli uh, next slide. Uh, so these videos are available online. Um, so the, the two-step uh, approach to this training uh, first step was to have um, them watch the two first videos, giving context and um, and providing a detailed, um, let's say, guide to building a business plan. Next slide. Thank you. And after uh, meeting with them, we had them watch these three other videos. Video three uh, was on uh, how to reduce costs and optimize reven revenues, video four on how to choose appropriate financing mechanisms, and video five, examples of self-financing mechanisms. Next video, please. Okay, so who were the targets of last year's training? They were, well, the MPA managers and financial officers at Mediterranean MPAs, those that are the most concerned by um, using a business plan. And so in all, we trained staff from eight Mediterranean MPAs. That is approximately 16 people. There's a map here showing their, their distribution in the Med. Um, so uh, Ashtum El Hamid Protectorate in Egypt, Rukova Bay in Turkey, Tire Coast Nature Reserve in Lebanon, Portofino, MPA in Italy, Landscape Park, Dibeli, Rtish. Someone will have to tell me if I pronounce that well in Slovenia. Um, and Sturian Landscape Park in uh, Slovenia, Hima Anfe in Lebanon, and Significant Landscape Canal Luca in Croatia. Apparently, someone is mentioning the slides are not appearing on the screen, so I'm not sure if the remote participants here actually see what I'm talking about. Next slide, please. See your slide. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay, thanks. So, so what are the key lessons learned um, from, this, from this training? Okay, so the, the first one was that it, it, initially this was meant to be a physical in the real world training. And it turned out that we had very good positive feedback from participants. Um, and so this was not just to please us. You, you can tell when people are trying to, you know, to please you. Um, most participants, even those with considerable uh, experience in the um, in the in the business planning, uh, said this gave them perspective, and so that for us was a very good message. And also, it turns out that compared to the the physical trainings on business planning we did previously, this is a lot more flexible. And the approach uh, here allows qualitative individual work, allowing each person a hands-on approach, okay? Um, and so because of the diversity of, of situations, um, it turned out that people uh, asked for, let's say, um, individualized uh, business plans. So this, you know, individual, individualization of, of approach is basically impossible in physical face-to-face -face training where... Uh, the, the global approach is the key. Um, so, so that was also a very important. Um, the training stressed, as was already known, the importance of management plans for building business plans. If you don't have a management plan or, or even an overall idea of where you're going, um, you, you, you just can't build a business plan. And so this brings us to the notion that um, I think one of the, the important um, Take home messages from the participants was most participants, well, not most, but a lot of them were planning two to three years ahead maximum. And that is, you know, it doesn't fit with what their job is about. Their job is about sustainable, uh, let's say, planning of conservation activities over five, 10, maybe even 20 years. And I think that touches to something which is really important is that the business planning. Uh, provided to a lot of managers the idea that even if your management plan, if you have one, is about to expire, even if you uh, don't have money beyond two to three years, you have to think about what's going to happen in 10 years' time because simply because your mandate, your MPA, and your activities are still going to be uh, 
are, are still going to be going uh, all the way to to that um, to that deadline. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go quickly. Uh, the okay, thanks. <laughs> that's yeah, that's actually where I wanted to to get. Um, so one of the key relevant recommendations from our side, from where we stand at Blue Seeds, is to keep delivering online trainings. Um, to our knowledge, there was only this one last year, and we have material now that is, uh, we have a protocol with, you know, the videos, the med plan tool, the general approach, and it would be fairly easy to repli replicate this. Actually, the whole, um, the whole training program is online, and people could, ac could actually do it by themselves autonomously, but uh, although that was one of the goals for, for putting everything online, I think uh, it's pretty clear that people won't do this by themselves. They, they need some incentive. They need someone to take them by the hand. So even though everything is online, uh, open access, and people should be able to do it autonomously, they need some incentive. So we still need to continue uh, training programs. Uh, we need to encourage a linkage with, with management planning. So if you are doing management plan, at a regional level, for example, uh, which makes sense, then you need to do business planning simultaneously. Uh, these need to go hand in hand together. And talking of which, the another good um, a positive message from this this training is that most of the approach, the the the, the videos, were used uh, to train on um, most MPAs from the Hompo the West African Network of Marine Protected Areas uh, last year. Um, and, um, and so that, yeah, that, that made sense. And it was really good to see that business planning at a regional scale is going to uh, be probably more effective, in my view, than, uh, let's say, picking a few people here and there across some region, large region, um, if it's done in accordance with, uh, you know, a network or a big plan to update management plans, it will be a lot more effective, I think. Um, I, I think I'm pretty much done. Um, the take-home message is um, online trainings are really effective, probably more than for other trainings where you need to be face-to-face -face in the real world. However, you, uh, you will need to... to uh, go out there and ask people to join these trainings somehow. So it will need some, um, some organization there. Um, and um, yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Um, and uh, I'll see you later for some questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Timothy. So before, before moving to a, a question sessions, just uh, some insight maybe from other networks with uh, Marie Romani, Executive Secretary of the MedPan Network. And then we take some time for the question from the, from the floor. Thank you, Romain. Uh, maybe just to a little insight from the, the presentation of Timothy, just to inform you that in the framework of the MedPan Regular Training Program, and uh, also in collaboration with the MedFund especially, we will soon organize a training on fundraising strategies for MPAs. And I noticed that Timothée uh, make this point very important. So just, uh, just a note on that, you will be informed soon. So here I will go to a global scale. And, um, um, and all of you know that we have those big challenges that are global in the Mediterranean at local level and global level about marine protection. It was really well said by many, um, many intervention. And uh, so we are talking about the question of effective management of MPA. We are talking about big targets uh, for the next eight years, as you say, annual. And um, we are talking about the importance of finding solution for sustainable funding. So um, I will talk to you about this Global Alliance for Marine Protection. So first, maybe not all of you are familiar with what are conservation trust funds. So as Romain said before, the MED fund is a, is a new tool Quite, quite new, quite not new now, but let's say in the Mediterranean, we have the, the luck now to have this conservation trust fund. Conservation trust fund dedicated to support MPA exists in 
in many different places in the world. And, um, and for example, you have the Costa Rica Por Siempre Trust Fund that is at national level. So you have the Med Fund at regional level, Mediterranean level. You have the MAR Fund that is um, related to the Mesoamerican Reef region. You have the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund, etc. In West Africa also, you have several national or regional funds. So those, those tools are key to support MP operation and recurring, recurrent costs with a long-term perspective. You have also some network of conservation trust funds, like Red Lac in Latin America, CAFE in West Africa, Pacifico also, and those network, like network of MPA managers that maybe you are more familiar with, help to build learning community to share best practice between the different uh, trust funds. On another hand, you have the network of MPA managers. Uh, you have MedPAM that I think um, you, you know at Mediterranean level. You have a CAMPAM in the Caribbean. You have Rampao that just Timothy mentioned in West Africa, NAMPAM in North America. And what are the objectives of those networks of MPA managers? Maybe I forgot to say that there are a lot of networks also at national level in the Mediterranean, but also elsewhere in the world. There are new networks, for example, in Western Indian Ocean. Now, now we are connected with them. And those networks are key to support effective management of MP by building community of practitioners and um, MP managers also, but other key, key actors around MP. But also those networks are, are key to make this link between what is going on at local level and this making process. And recently, or for some years now, different networks of MPA managers, including MedPan, we are collaborating together at global level, first at transatlantic level, and now more recently at more, a larger level, thanks to an EU ocean governance project that enables us to, to make kind of joint mobilization of those different networks. And so, <laughs> And you, that there was a natural, there is a natural partnership between, for example, MedFun and MedPan. We will start soon a Jeff project, and this is really, I think, interesting for the the Mediterranean. And this this collaboration, this this model, uh, it can inspire also other regions in the world. And and maybe this was the idea of this big alliance to say, okay, at the end. We have the same objective. We, we would like to support MPA that are effective and sustainably funded. So we, with different trust funds, with networks of trans, trust funds and networks of MPA managers at different levels, let's say, we, are, we want to join forces to, to do two things, to create um, um, a global community of practice to exchange, especially on the question of fi financing of, of MPAs, and then also to bring so the voice of MPA managers. And, and you know that MedPan, we are doing this. Uh, many of you are members or partners of MedPan, you, you know that. But we cannot be the only voice, for example, at global level. MedPan alone, it's difficult to have some, some weight. If we go, we go already with our networks of MPA managers elsewhere. And now we will go with Conservation Trust Fund, of course, with the Med Fund, and with our net, uh, networks and over trust funds. So just to say, I would like to, to be brief, but just to say that we launched this alliance. It's, it's just a start. And, and uh, I'm sure, I'm convinced that we, we, in the next 10 years, we will, uh, we will go really far, far together. And, um, and yeah, this, this is a nice picture during the IUCN Congress. Uh, we organized a special event and, and we launched this alliance with all those uh, networks, trust funds, and, um, and this, this is just the beginning, and, and let's see the, the future. <laughs> thank you very much, Marie, for, thank you very much, Marie, for, for the presentation. Does it work? Yeah? Okay. Uh, so now it's time for some discussions uh, regarding the presentation we had this morning on funding and investing in marine protected areas. Uh, question from the floor here in Palma, or maybe questions also online. So we want to start. Yes, Christophe. Maybe present yourself and then introduce yourself. Well, hello. I'm Christophe Baker from the Fundación Capital Mediterráneo. We are the last arrivals on this wonderful boat. 
And I want to thank, first of all, the organizers because they invited us and to participate. And it's a great learning process and especially a great social event. It's nice to meet all these nice people. I, I would like to come directly to the, the, the theme of the financing with a question. Is it possible to imagine some kind of uh, economic compensation mechanism for what I would call the creators of life? Anybody that's engaged in MPAs and around in the surrounding areas who are actually contributing to the increase of biomass and biodiversity, but are not recognized. I mean, I'm just taking an example of, an, of a farmer, <laughs> organic farmer, who's having great difficulties to place his products because of the market the values. These people are actually contributing to increasing life, right? They're contributing, to, they're, they're going against the eco side that is happening. Is it possible to imagine some mechanisms, which of course would be, I would imagine, uh, national, you know, governmental support that would measure their impact on the increase of biomass and biodiversity, and that would be the measure with which they would be compensated? Okay. Do you have any experience from that? I mean, I don't think you can find the type of example that you are saying. I mean, when we try to regenerate and improve the state of conservation of the marine environment, you need to implement a program of measures. And that program of measures generally is directed and designed and led by a public initiative. And in some cases, there is private initiative. However, I'm more interested on the other side of the coin of what you're saying, which is all those actors that do benefit from the marine environment and that are not contributing to it. Because for me, that's the, the biggest asymmetry that we have. So we have the marine environment and marine protected areas throwing loads of benefits to our society, to the tourism sector, to the yachting sector, to the fishery sector. And the tourism sector, and I focus on that in particular, contributing nothing or peanuts to the conservation that they and their future depends on. And I think this massive asymmetry needs to be corrected. And by visualizing that huge asymmetry between what they get and what they put back, then we can start building some of those compensation mechanisms or just an invitation, <laughs> an invitation to be a bit more, um, you know, like, okay, I, I see it, let's do it, yeah. Uh, that's just to build on that, I think that, Anjol, you say that two-thirds of the value, actually, of the MPA benefits from, uh, tourism activity benefits from two-thirds of the value. And my question was, how much do they contribute to the preservation of your MPA? Is there a fee somewhere, either tourism no, no, no. tax? There, or? There, there is, there is hardly anything. I mean, obviously, in the Balearics, there is a, a, what they call the sustainable tourism tax. And part of that tax is directed to some nature conservation programs. But it's not, there is not hypothecation between the tax and the, and the region. So yes, they are contributing something, but the asymmetry, the asymmetry is massive. It's compare, compare a, a cascade like the Niagara Falls and a water pistol. That's, that's to me the, the, the scale of the difference. Here we have the image. Lorenzo. Yeah. I completely agree with you. And I can add that, uh, for example, our MPA is very small with all the activity that you can imagine in very small, uh, in very small area. And uh, so there, there are a lot of conflict between categories, between uh, categories and the MPA, and in different impacts on, uh, uh, on the environment. Where? an activity uh, finish his impacts, start the impacts, a complementary impacts. And um, it's very difficult because we do a lot of effort to make understand to the, our stakeholder that they depend by uh, the ecosystem. But uh, with one of the, it's a, a leisure boater owner uh, of, um, um, that uh, rent also his boat. And uh, it was, uh, it is one of the most uh, collaborative, uh, one that we talk about with him, 
about the problems, about a lot of st uh, stuff. Last year, asked to me, but Lorenzo, is uh, more uh, important, in your opinion, in this area, the um, income from voting and so anchoring, for example, on Posidonia or Posidonia? At the time, I understand that uh, maybe we have to do a lot of work on communication, on uh, natural capital value, on make them understand that all of them are dependent by the, the habitat. So I think that uh, you, what you propose, uh, it's like a dream. Now we are uh, uh, in, uh, in a situation uh, worse for, for in, in Portofino, but for example, I, in all the um, Italian MPA. So we, um, maybe this is the future, but now we have uh, to, um, to do a lot of work to preserve and to make understand uh, to do, don't do impacts. Then uh, maybe to pay for, uh, for, uh, um, for uh, increase uh, and to recognize our, our work. I don't know if... Uh... Thank you. Yeah, and just maybe to add before passing the, 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 the mic to you, also that there is some mechanism called impact investing where uh, some organization are uh, supporting uh, financial uh, activities or financial companies that do good for the business, but also do good for the environment. So some 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 banks, some some organizations now are being more and more specialized in this kind of process. They, it's called impact investing. So this is maybe something that you could uh, you could look at. Thank you. Uh, the, the, the topic of compensation, uh, Daniela Minetti, Regione Liguria. Uh, the topic of compensation is uh, dangerous for, because uh, we can think that uh, we can pay for, for damage. Uh, and uh, and uh, all uh, technical um, community study to understand how we can value the damage, the environmental damage, and how much it they cost. But it's interesting, the suggestion, because we can uh, um, propose it in uh, opposite uh, method. But uh, we have to understand how we can pay the ecosystem services and how ecosystem services go inside the chain value and how we can pay the value of these ecosystem services in all the step of the product or the fish, for example, or, or all, uh, all the, the service that we can use. In this way, we can compensation this, uh, uh, this thing. And there is another uh, topic, is how we can uh, recognize uh, the value of ecosystem services for who uh, implement the value of biodiversity, for who have uh, an, a positive uh, action for environment. So um, I think that the approach for ecosystem services uh, um, enlarge our uh, um, uh, capacity of action. We can start from uh, cap natural capital, but in ecosystem services, we can understand uh, one for one, uh, just for uh, furniture, but not all, just for furniture, also for services for culture or for uh, uh, tourism and so on. Uh, what is uh, this value? And uh, understand how this value go inside the value chain and who have to pay for, uh, for this. Uh, obviously, we need also a public uh, consideration of all of the, the, this, uh, this value and uh, implement uh, with uh, um, policy, but also with money, uh, uh, the activities that can go to implement biodiversity quality. In this way, I think it is possible. But we have uh, to think uh, in a different category. We have to think uh, a, 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 um, a socioeconomical system that don't uh, have the, 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 um, uh, our own uh, uh, way. Uh, uh, we have to think uh, the, the, the future because we are a little bit more 
own uh, uh, more grow that uh, we, we think. Uh, there are uh, there are mechanisms. Uh, there are things uh, that are moving. Uh, there are European strategy. There are Bauhaus. Uh, there are things that uh, change now, and so we can think inside this uh, the economic method. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. One other question you 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 raised, right? So it's I don't know if it's a question or it's. Mm, a reflection and is uh, a little bit uh, taking uh, her words. And at the beginning, um, Aniol said that uh, not everything ca can be um, uh, counted as money. And for example, we don't need that. But because our society, capitalistic society, works this way, that's why we are doing this um, studies and quantifications. And I don't question that. I mean, <laughs> this is a very good work, but uh, maybe at the same time, we have to work or invest. And I don't know if it's we or someone in um, changing society values. So as, because otherwise it's business as usual. And, you know, we are changing um, the way, but not really the, the way we do things. I don't know. So it's something that, I think maybe it's inside every one of us. Uh, and even it's a bigger challenge. I just wanted to point it out. Yeah, thank you. This is a long term, right? Okay, because in the meantime, the biodiversity in the Med Sea is collapsing. So we need also short term. Short term, I think it both goes together. Uh, maybe I have one question myself also, maybe following your point, is that how um, successful you were, Aniol, and Lorenzo, in convincing uh, decision makers based on your natural capital study. Did you have time already to share that and how it was like received by, by, by your decision makers or, or, or local government, for example? Um, well, I think that um, having the opportunity to get the message across that investing in marine protected areas pays off, given all the media impact that this had, is very beneficial, but it's very difficult to track what impact this has. At a more uh, local level, we have managed to persuade the monitoring commissions for the fisheries reserves to start measuring many more indicators than what they would otherwise boot. Because in the past, they would only be measuring commercial fish species biomass and diversity. Why? Because they were created for fisheries performance. Hence, I only measure this. This is my responsibility. But we said, hey guys, open your minds and try to measure all these other impacts because then you are able to put forward a much more persuasive and compelling case for marine conservation. So I'm also working very closely with Tony Fon because Tony Fon has been doing all this archaeological work of following each one of the monitoring commissions and ensuring that they meet and that they have an agenda. Now they have all agreed to incorporate new indicators. However, we will need more funding to do that, but they see the benefit. And, and then the, the other example is that last week, we were invited to go to the World Oceans Day in Madrid, um, invited by the Ministry of Environment. There was the Minister of Environment, Vice President of Spain, who is a, a strong advocate for marine conservation, Teresa Rivera. And we had seven minutes of glory, hmm? seven minutes of glory, to emphasize the need for marine, for conservation, for marine, um, for more funding for marine conservation, that MPAs, um, investing in MPAs makes economic sense. Now, it is probably coincidence, but four days after that, four days after that, uh, yesterday, they issued a press release saying that there will be 30 million euros going to coastal, regional uh, communities to protect marine biodiversity. It's probably coincidence, and 30 million is peanuts compared to what is needed. But it, welcome it is, you know, <laughs> it will be, we will never know if that had an impact or not. But I guess that little by little it, it permeates. Okay. In, uh, in our case, uh, we use this study for now mainly with uh, the stakeholder categories because uh, to reach the policymaker and the local administration, administrator, we have to 
uh, convince somehow the stakeholder, the users, because uh, if the um, uh, with a bottom up uh, approach, because uh, if we start for administration and uh, we know they know that their electors, let's say this, their uh, citizen doesn't approve this, uh, this some kind of uh, measure based on, uh, for example, on uh, capital natural, natural capital, we are sure that they, don't, they didn't agree. So starting from the bottom, and then when uh, we are almost sure that the stakeholder association, the stakeholder, the stakeholder in general, agree more or less with us, we can go to the administrator. But now we are in the step with uh, to convince all the stakeholders. Thank you, well understand. You had, uh, yeah, yes. you raise your hands and... Yep. Um, I, I okay. cannot be more in agreement with the Catalan colleague uh, concerning uh, what we have to include in the accounting. Uh, I mean, there are many intangibles which are not accounted in this way of, 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 present, of presentation of the values of, uh, of marine protected areas and protected areas in general. And I would like to draw your attention, particularly in the health problem, let's say. We have seen during the pandemic uh, that many, many uh, health problems have uh, risen up um, in, in Europe and around the world. And this issue has been addressed already uh, concerning protected areas on land. Um, there are many, well, many, at least some um, medical systems, national medical systems, which are incorporating the uh, nature-based uh, solution in the resolution of health problems, not only mental health problems, but also in general terms. For example, in Scotland, they, have, they are doing a very uh, remarkable job on that, and also in Catalonia in some uh, primary assistance uh, system. So we should begin to think um, also in the values of the marine protected areas in this kind of terms. We are offering to the society not only biodiversity protection, not only CO2 uptake uh, of our Posidonia beds, but also many, many intangibles value which should be uh, accounted. And I would like to make a comment, uh, uh, a nice comment, and you all don't take me bad, on the cascade uh, of the Niagara Fall cascade metaphor. Um, I am not sure if the people are um, feeling that the uh, values of the marine protected areas, particularly local stakeholders, um, is the Niagara Falls which is falling over them. Maybe we should, um, let's say, use uh, a, a, a low metaphor, <laughs> something which is not Niagara Falls, but maybe a creek in the in the um, uh, Sierra Norte de Mallorca or something like this. Or maybe we have to change our communication uh, tools to address them directly to to uh, local stakeholders and to make them uh, see. I mean, it's very good to have, um, let's say, um, um, a WhatsApp or a or a comment of, of Leonardo DiCaprio on the web, but um, I think we should uh, think more about how to uh, address the message to local stakeholders and to the uh, communities which are in the surroundings of the MPAs, because I'm not quite sure that they are envisaging the values and the positive aspects of MPAs in such a way, in such a ratio of 10 to one. Thank okay. you. Uh, thank you, thank you for your comment. Uh, one question. Well, thank you very much. Um, this is Gonzalez from the Mediterranean Biodiversity Protection Community, a project that has been working closely with um, BA Engage and MBA Networks. I have uh, three uh, comments to, to make. I hope they will enrich the discussions. The first one was um, uh, consideration towards the marine protected areas and their role in uh, as carbon sinks for carbon sequestration as well. If this is considered in this um, natural capital accounting um, exercise that is done, that could help also uh, link the business plan uh, somehow for carbon offsets in this sense. The second issue would be um, the word restoration hasn't been mentioned or I haven't heard anything about restoration uh, these days. And I think it could be also a good measure to, uh, to consider to fight climate change. 
There's a new European uh, restoration law that is going to be launched at the end of June. So I invite everybody to look at it and consider as a potential um, assistance, let's say, to these efforts to uh, make marine protected areas more effective. And finally, on capacity building needs and the lack of time and resources among marine protected areas managers, um, I refer to the twinning program mentioned by my colleague in Lebanon. And this um, idea of twinning marine protected areas also in the sense that they could exchange expertise and support each other in areas where uh, some of them are lacking um, experience. So that could be a more efficient time, like in a secondment schemes or something like that to um, share expertise among, among the network members. Um, that was it, thank you. Thank you. So regarding the carbon sequestration, maybe you can. Uh, yeah, we took into account the carbon absorption of, of, of Posidonia and that was measured as one of the services and that was valued. Um, personally, I'm, I believe that given that Posidonia is going to increase its mortality as temperature goes up, uh, I don't think you can commit to any long-term carbon offset product linked to Posidonia. So personally, I believe that any carbon products linked to Posidonia are low-quality products. And I am very, very wary of any... Um, I mean, I would love that the 600 square kilometers of Posidonia that the Balearics has could translate into a financial rent, into a rent capture for marine conservation in the Balearics. I would love that. But we have been, we've, we've been analyzing the situation. And um, for carbon products to be good products, they need to be additional and they need to be long term. The additionality criteria is not met because Posidonia is already protected here. So the, the obligation is to protect it. So there is no additionality to that. And the long term that that project of conservation is going to be there in 10, 20, 30 years time in, the, in, a, in a warming sea context is no longer met. So I'm very concerned that the conservation community, not only here but around the world, has a huge demand for funding. And that is going to lower the standard of some products, whether they are biodiversity offsets or carbon offsets or something, because there is a big thirst from companies to link themselves with that. So um, it's fantastic that there is a private interest in funding um, regeneration and restoration, but it needs to be done very, very, very carefully. And we need to know where the red lines are. Thank you, Anyol. Maybe one last, we had one last uh, question at the back, Amokta. Ah. But David, okay, you want to comment on that and then I'm up top. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I would like, first of all, to thank you, uh, Marie's Foundation, for letting us uh, participate in this Network Capital Accounting Project and also the, the organization to allow us to participate here. It, what I'm, it's more, much more a reflection than a question. Um, when we speak about Network Capital Accounting, it's not all, only about volume. It's about how to capture data in different ways. Uh, it's not only about how to uh, monetize all this information, uh, but we've been speaking this morning about vulnerability and different issues. If we capture this data in a harmonized way, we could use this data for different purposes, not only for uh, monitor evaluation, but also for communication, for regulation, or even for offsetting or compensation uh, purposes. Um, the other thing is that highlight natural capital accounting methods. It's not only data, it's about ecosystem services. And it's about all the value that the ecosystem services provides. So it's important to have this harmonized way of collecting data, not only at a habitat species, in economic terms, but also uh, the ecosystem services um, data and information that our colleague from Liguria uh, told us, because it allows us to the, to to link it with the next point that uh, have been mentioned in 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 the last um, presentation. It's how to finance all this marine protected area because. If you have all this information, then which are the, the ecosystem services? Which new business plan can 
be based on this ecosystem, ecosystem services uh, provision, either provision in regulation or cultural, you can, base the, you can build the business plan that it's needed to finance MPAs. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. So we are just taking one last uh, question or comment, and then we move to the recommendation because we need, and if it's, I give you the floor with the recommendation at the same time. Okay. Uh, thank you, Roma. Uh, and thank you for all the presenters for their presentations. Really, I'm thinking another way. You know that the blue uh, economy, it is uh, a huge topic. And also, uh, there are many activities now we are focusing on an MBAs. Uh, it is normal because we are working with Midban. Uh, and, uh, but I, I have maybe... Uh, I'm thinking about other things because with the blue economy, we need to deal with the, with, the, with the local communities and with the local fishermen. But we need to take into account there are another activities in another ecosystems which is uh, linked with the marine protected areas like coastal area and also wetlands. So in the future, we, if we started with the NBAs, and uh, we, are, we manage it well, the MBA, and the locals they, who's working in the sea, they get the benefit from this MBA. What will happen with others who's working in wetlands and others, and they are the local also on the same side? So we should think to find some links between projects, maybe with MedFund or other organization for that. So I think it is really uh, complete each other, uh, link, it, link it to each other uh, tightly. So, so we should think about that. Thank you. Maybe I, um, I pass the, the, the mic to Carole uh, Martinez from MedPan, just sharing with us some, some recommendation. And if you have some question or recommendation, then we can take them from the, from the floor. So like the other topic, a recommendation have been prepared regarding this issue of uh, sustainable uh, funding or findings of marine conservation. And as you can see in a policy paper that has been uh, circulated last week, we have been uh, elaborating 14 recommendations and we will present a few of them. Uh, we would like to discuss with you if they are the one you would like to promote or not. So these recommendations are actually to, to make it may be more clear because there was some confusion. They have been developed in the frame of uh, the post-2020 uh, roadmap you have all contributed to. Uh, the exercise of a policy paper is to further articulate and to make more operational the overarching recommendation of the roadmap. And thanks to the roadmap, thanks to the work done uh, within the working groups of MedPan, but as well all the formal recommendations from the MedPan annual workshop, we have elaborated this set of uh, recommendations. So a total of uh, 14 recommendations to address uh, the gap in terms of uh, funding. It has been said that uh, the needs in terms of supporting effective management of marine protected areas in the region is around uh, 800 million per year. And uh, team uh, indicator with the inflation rate uh, funding need of uh, 2.5 billion. It's a quite huge uh, inflation rate, but nevertheless, there are needs to address. But um, if it looks impressive at the first sight, actually, when you compare these figures uh, with uh, the economic output of the tourism, for instance, it represents only 0.2% of this uh, economic output of uh, the tourism sector, or even only 0.17% of the asset delivered by the marine resources. So you can see there is definitely uh, a positive ratio. But to date, um, the, there is less than 15% of the needs in terms of funding of MPAs covered. So we need to find solution. And this is why we will present few key recommendations for your own consideration and comments. So these uh, recommendations are supporting the key message we will convey tomorrow regarding the need to catalyze sustainable financing opportunity for this uh, Mediterranean Sea. 
And the first set of recommendations is definitely echoing the pilot action, the results, meaning that we need to promote support economic analysis to show actually that uh, providing financial support to marine protected areas, it's investing, investing in natural capital, investing in sustaining all the diversity of uh, uh, ecological services we are benefiting from marine ecosystems that are preserved through marine protected areas. And this definitely to consolidate the economic value of marine conservation efforts. And here again, to highlight the additionality of marine protection efforts, in addition to the existing economic value. So again, thanks to this project, MPA Networks, we have been able to support uh, natural accounting, but we need to actually expand these efforts to have a more accurate understanding of what does it mean at the national level and then regional level. The second recommendation is actually very linked since it's about having a more accurate picture of the funding needs. Uh, we hear figures, for instance, we have these big figures at the regional level, but what does it mean as a site of the marine protected areas? What does it mean at the national level or even the sub-regional level, we can think, for instance, of the Adric region, we need to support assessment of the needs in terms of funding, and this to support the development of business plans. You can only argue and uh, call for further fundings when you really know what you need. Then we come to the, the three last uh, recommendations, and they are more linked about um, finance engineering. And we heard already uh, the word of fees. So what came from the different uh, discussions through the former workshop, but as well the, the working group on, on finance of Medban, is that we need actually to work as well at the political level to have enabling a national framework, supporting the development and the use of fees that would directly finance the marine protected areas. There are already financial uh, system, I would say fiscal systems and tools. The taxes, uh, most of the time, are not directly supporting the marine protected areas. So the idea is to further investigate how the development of fees could directly support the funding of marine protected areas or even network of marine protected areas and how they could address not only, for instance, the purchase of material or of equipment, but as well the human resources, the staff. For instance, we discussed with um, Porco National Park, and they told us we have tools, we have fiscal tools, but to date, uh, these tools don't allow us to use the money collected to recruit people, and we need people at sea. So this is something to further discuss as a political level, how we could develop the set of financial and fiscal tools and how they can do really address the needs on the ground. The, the other recommendation, it's about um, trust fund, conservation trust fund that Maria uh, mentioned with the uh, Alliance. And during the, the discussion, there was a question raised about uh, maybe exploring if there is a need to uh, create, in addition to the Med Fund, National Conservation Trust Fund. But we all know that uh, it's a long process. It's quite a costly process. It engages a lot of uh, trade-offs and transaction costs. So as part of the, the discussion, there was maybe as well the idea to maybe not create National Trust Fund, but as well to see how uh, the Med Fund the trust fund we have at the regional level could further evolve and could, for instance, have here marked a national counter to further invest in the different countries. And I would say, why not all the countries of the region? Keeping on the discussing about how the Med Fund could evolve and even grow, part of the recommendation was about to help the Med Fund to diversify if to a source of uh, funding, and to see how Medfun could actually uh, capture international finance using different uh, sources of revenues, for instance, uh, shipping fees, port fees, aquarium fees, tourism fees, etc. 
So this is in a nutshell the key recommendation we have selected for your can review, your comments. As you know, there are 14 total recommendations. So please let us know if you agree with this kind of selection, what is missing and how you could further fine tune them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. So I don't know if you want already to react uh, to the to do uh, uh, some extract of the policy uh, policy paper and recommendations. I know that Tony, uh, Tony, you left. I oh, know uh, Tony, you here. Tony, you had a question previously. Is it linked to the recommendation? No. Okay. Okay. Is it? No. Sorry. So I have to take some minute for the recommendations. Yes, you have question at the back. You don't have a, a mic? That's a real pity for you. It's coming. Hello. We have a comment from uh, Timothy Cook from Brussels who spoke uh, further. He said that uh, uh, 700 million euros per year financing gap to fund 10% coverage of MED with MPAs equal 2.1 billion euros gap for 30% co coverage plus 400 million euros inflation equal approximately 2.5 billion euros per year gap to reach the new CBD goals. He says all this is just a simple linear extrapolation. Sounds like a lot, but we are talking about over 1,000 MPAs in the Met, so not so much. Maybe, Timothy, you want to add something more, but that's... Uh, yeah. No, that, that's a good point. Thank you very much, Timothy. I think it's very important to have that in mind. When we are pushing the idea of having 30 percent of the Mediterranean Sea covered by MPA by 2030. We have to remind that those are to be effectively, sustainably financed MPAs, not only like a magic number saying 30 by 30, sometimes we hear that, but it has to be explained that 30 by 30, how, how much money does it cost to really deliver uh, uh, ecological uh, benefits based on those uh, MPAs? Other comments from the Yep, yeah. Caroline. I think it's being said in the sec in the second recommendation, but anyway, I will I will uh, include uh, a comment on the uh, to push and encourage uh, national government to allocate uh, sufficient funds for the effective management of their national systems of. MPAs as the core part of the budget allocated for MPA management. I mean, it's good to find uh, external uh, funding opportunities, uh, funds, uh, foundations, etc. But I think that um, we have a strong need to encourage national governments to increase their national budgets in this direction. Thank you. Thank you. One more comment, David. Just one insight regarding the first paragraph, when we say promote support the need of economic analysis, I would suggest to include a harmonized way to make the, this economic analysis in a way that it could be compared in the different parts of the MP ways, in MPA parts of the Mediterranean area. Okay, thank you. There is also something, I think, Carol, that it should be highlighted, but maybe it's highlighted in all your recommendations is that there is a big gap, as we all know, between the north shores of the Mediterranean Sea and the south shores of the Mediterranean Sea. So uh, this has to reflect somewhere that the financial needs is as important in the south east of the Mediterranean that it is at uh, the north part of the Med. You had a comment also? Thank you. Uh, I, I think it should be uh, just a suggestion uh, to link uh, the, our request for a European country uh, with uh, the plan that every region had to, had to do uh, for a priority action framework request from uh, European Commission uh, in order to uh, what we need uh, to spend for uh, um, 
for biodiversity also in, in the sea uh, and for implement the policy. And this is the first suggestion. The second one is how we can, in, in, we can spend, the, the, spend this, uh, this money because uh, when we uh, implement our path, uh, for for uh, inland and also for the sea, um, understand well that uh, not all the, the money that we have, uh, better uh, not not money not solve all problem, isn't it? Uh, and so uh, if we have money, no money solve the problem, but uh, not just uh, I have money and and so I spend to solve. I have money, but I have to involve different subjects to move them to have a, a positive action. Uh, and so, isn't it? Uh, not, not directly. I, I, don't, 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 I don't have to build something. It's so easy for uh, an administration. I have to build something. Uh, I have money, I build. Okay. No, in this case, I have money, but with this money, I have to move uh, the um, ecosystem, uh, uh, human ecosystem, to have uh, to implement the action, and so I think uh, this is uh, a, um, a reason that we have to uh, to think well uh, this this kind of action. For us, uh, when we implement our path, uh, we uh, have uh, many problems to understand the measure in which we can put this money. Um, and the path, as you know, uh, we, we, in, um, we address the path to catch money in all the European uh, program. Uh, and, and so we have to understand well how that program can finance the right action that we need. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I think that we are done for this session. So thanks again to Agnol, uh, Esteban, to Lorenzo uh, Meroto, to Timothée Cook, uh, Marie Romani, Carol Martinez. Thank you all of you for this, uh, for this session. And I think now it's time for lunch, no? Uh, Tony? Ah, you want to tell us? Uh, is there, are we going back to the place we were yesterday evening? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Too bad. I don't think so because all the buses were fully booked, but uh, our, my, our friend was ready to to uh, uh, receive us uh, because he he fell in love with us and with our projects. Uh, I have to say that um, Martina told me that uh, it was the first time that someone said uh, to her, I don't know if it's something that happens to us, that uh, someone was giving a, a big thank you to the to the MPA's community. So I think it was, it was a, a big moment to me. So uh, I wanted to tell some um, logistic things before, uh, and, and then I will do a, a farewell uh, speak, <laughs> very short. But um, we have to go out for a picture, a group picture. You have to uh, go and sign the assistance uh, papers that um, Emily is having out there. And also Emily is holding the lunch tickets. So if you want to have lunch, you have to go through the, through the, feeding, through the feeding and signing point. And then uh, I wanted just to see that, uh, to tell you that we are very glad and I personally to have all of you here. And I want to thank uh, so many people that has been working for that. Sorry, <laughs> but okay. I want I want to start by my my colleague Sara Sara Garcia, who made this incredible exhibition. And uh, until the last minute, we were suffering because the the, the poles were not arriving and so on. Because the the crisis here in, in Mallorca has resolved in something like a boom of everything. So everything every every uh, smith uh, is fully booked. Every constructor, everything. So it has been very difficult in this time. It will be more much more easier to do it in april but the uh, the circumstances of, of the project made us uh, to make it here so it has been a bit more complicated but, but it's
uh, equally uh, joyful for us having you here. So I recommend you to have a look to these pictures because this exhibition will be traveling all this all all this summer along the the island in the most crowded places, in the touristic places, in the street. Thousands of people will see the exhibition, and there is a piece of policy paper cooking that is in the top of the uh, of the place so it's about the photog photographers being included not only in contest of beautiful pictures but they will be aware that they are uh, pushing and putting on the on the street something that is a political recipe for better mpas and this is uh, rather well explained there, and there are a link and there is an email and we will try to collect information. So uh, the project finishes now in June, but the exhibition will run and we'll keep on collecting interest on this subject. Uh, I have to say that I was really surprised by Yorgos. Uh, that's how he's so funny. I will, I will like an applause for him because he's a great guy. And Yorgos is Greek, I love Greek. Half of my heart is in Greece. Uh, I used to go sailing there. So, uh, Tommy, uh, Georgos, we have to meet this summer there. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I wanted to say also um, thank you, a big thank you to Pepa Mengual. Pepa Mengual opened us the door of a shining car in this conservation train. Circumstances were the circumstances that were, but we, we just jump on the car of MPA Networks because he uh, gave us the key to go there and we enjoyed the company of the MPA networks and and the train was already mm, starting so uh, Medpan did the great job of preparing and we just jumped on that and when the project was finally approved uh, we we were ready to go for that and I am also very thankful to David that opened to me the story of the of the natural capital, I have to say that I'm. I was before that. I was a very uh, well, was more or less skeptical about cap natural capital. And I will like to discuss with you by email my impressions. I will not not go there, but I think that natural capital provides us a kind of a dashboard of a nu nuclear plant. We have designed. We have, we see where every element is, every pump, every pipe, and probably is not perfect. And then when we start the machine, we, we will see that we, we need or we have to change some, some things, but the idea is about improving. And also the best thing to me is that we can see where we can make investments that make a real benefit. And probably we have an area now that we know that it gives us 5 million benefits. We know that we spend 500,000 uh, 500, euros there. And it will be wise to know if we double the the investment, probably we can have a marginal Im uh, impact of three or four times the benefits of this investment. Of course, we will not double the full benefit by investing uh, half a million more, but probably we'll have two or three million if we put the money in the right place. And that's why David Ecoaxa and also the company, the local company, um, CBBA, who helped us collecting the information and was driven by Mino, that's the same person who was describing the story of the Marine Reserve we were yesterday, I think this will be uh, doing a great difference. And I have not much math to add. Well, thank you to Tony for the night yesterday. Thank you to Daisy from the restaurant Tast that we that she has solved very well uh, a, a little incidents we had and it was great. We had a great dinner. Thank you to the people in the Rafael Verdera boat that gave us this uh, pleasant place and also the Salen Yacht. We have this, uh, we, we, I will send you um, in drone images and everything uh, if you are not um, overwhelmed to that. And also to the people in Impress Rapid and the company that is making Tony Mir, Satisfactoria, Palm Aquarium that was also providing a visit to the scientific committee. Um, okay, if I'm leaving, I think I said everyone, thank you to the, or, the, or joint uh, project MPA Engage. It was a great idea because it, someone asked me uh, why you have done this, this meeting. I, I said, because it was impossible not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> 
just a few words uh, to thank you all for your kindness, for your patience, for your valuable uh, input. It has been definitely uh, very exciting. I would like to thank again very, very, very uh, warmly uh, Tony and Maria's Foundation for the amazing work done here for preparing this uh, event. Without you, it would have been uh, very difficult. I think we could not have done it. Uh, so a heartfelt thank you, Tony and Marias. Uh, for, for what all you did. Thank you so much. Thank you as well uh, to our partners. Uh, for sure, it was a bit more challenging to make a joint event. But at it's the not end, over. It's not no, over. No. <laughs> but at the end, it was fun. And I think we can see here the added value. And for instance, if we pick only the comment from Lorenzo, uh, seeing the, the interest to join the tool in terms of vulnerability assessment, in terms of natural capital, I think we can sense here, we can understand here the need to make uh, this uh, collaboration because definitely at the end, all the issues are interlinked. So thank you very much again to, uh, to you all, but to the team as well, my colleagues who have worked hard as well, particularly to Emily, <laughs> who is our, uh, our magician in terms of uh, logistics, who has developed uh, wonders of patience. <laughs> My colleagues, uh, Suzanne, uh, Pierre, uh, Marie, Magali, uh, Georges, and Hen, who have been very supportive. As you can understand, we have been under high pressure because we wanted to have more time, actually, to, to make a proper capitalization, but we were not allowed extra months. So we have been working all together very hard in order to be able to capture all the lesson learned to give back the, the microphone and the light to our partners. And here again, I would like to thank amazing partner we had in MPA Networks. You know, I jump on the train in the middle of uh, the, um, the adventure. We have been uh, lucky to actually meet uh, very motivating, passionate people. And you, you know, this is this kind of oxygen that makes sense when you work hard on the daily basis. So thank you to all the partners for your hard work, for making this project happening, and for all this uh, very rich and useful uh, lesson learned. It's our duty now to pass on the baton, to work uh, as well uh, with you at the political level. Thank you again very much. I give now the mic to, uh, to Kim. Thank you. Well, yesterday I started my speech or my words, thank you. And uh, I'm happy that we are thanking again. And I'm, I'm not going to uh, stop thanking uh, all of you for being here, for your participation. I'm not going to repeat all the names because they have been named. And tomorrow we will be, uh, and the next day we will be as well, thanking all the people uh, for making this possible because it's, it's hard, but it's necessary. It's, it's more needed than ever uh, to, be, to be together and uh, collaborate. Thank you again as well for being adaptive. Um, yesterday we adapted really well to the restaurant. I think that we can be adapted to this. So we show that we, we can do it. So thank you very much so for this. Uh, I just want to say some, I was listening all the great presentation and uh, there are some words that came all uh, in many of those. Those words were harmonization, standardization, Sharing, sharing is something that appears many, many times, and it's difficult to share. I mean, the word is easy, the, the, the concept is easy, but uh, making it possible, like we are doing now, it's, uh, it's difficult. And I think that we have to pursue uh, on this. We talk about financing, and yesterday I say a number. Uh, do you remember the number that uh, I say? 0 0.38, and today I have that we get another nice number, 2.5 billion which is the financing gap of uh, uh, having the so we have this uh, this um, these numbers here that we have to keep in mind because they have to kind of be our line of, of action to cover all these gaps that we have and uh, I just want for tomorrow more logistics before I'm uh, giving you the last uh, words we are opening the registration at 845 uh, in the at the Institute of Marine Science in Barcelona so don't be arrived, don't, we will be starting at 9.30. Don't arrive at 9.30 because uh, we need to try to keep the schedule because then there is a bus taking the rest of us, the survivors, the, the brave ones,
two rosas. And uh, if we have delays on the, on the bus and all the things, so try to be uh, there at uh, 8.45, 90 uh, for, for this. And um, uh, say have safe travels to Barcelona. And I just want to finish to, uh, with this uh, idea of collaboration. And this, uh, another word that I came many times is about the local and the different levels at which we are acting. No? And in the MP Engage uh, project, we have this lemma about um, act local and think Mediterranean. No? And I think that this is a, a good uh, lemma to, to apply for this. So let's together act local and think Mediterranean. Thank you very much. A big thank you and a very heartfelt uh, thought for interpreters. They are not visible, but they have been highly supporting and as well a great work. So a big thank you to our translators who are online and have been able this exchange possible. <laughs>